Now let's go into more detail on each section. So we're gonna go into exactly what you can expect to see in each section. So let's start with the biological and biochemical foundations of living systems section. I know that's a really long name, but the way I like to think of it is it's kind of, you know, bi biology's in there, biochemistry's in there. And so that's what the main component of this section on the MCAT is. So you have 25% of the questions will be related to biochemistry. 65% of the questions are gonna be related to biology. 5% will be related to general chemistry and 5% will be related to organic chemistry. We'll talk more about the details of the prerequisites for the MCAT and exactly what courses will help you for the MCAT in the prerequisites chapter. So here you'll notice that it's not just biology and biochemistry in this section, but it is also a bit of general chemistry and organic chemistry. And one thing to note is that in an MCAT passage, it's very unlikely that you'll get a passage on the MCAT that's entirely related to one subject. Um, what it will most likely be is you'll have a passage and then there might be you know, a couple questions relating to biology, maybe a question on biochemistry, a question on general chemistry, and then another passage might have a couple questions on organic chemistry, some more biochemistry, and so on. But overall in this section, this is the breakdown of the questions. The next section that we'll take a look at is the chemical and physical foundations of biological systems. So this one again sounds like chemistry and um, physics, but then it also mentions that there's some biology involved. So what is the exact breakdown? So this section involves 25% biochemistry again. So biochemistry shows up in both the first section and the second section. 5% biology. So biology again shows up here as well. Now this section is made up of more general chemistry. So here general chemistry is the largest component. We have 30% of the questions will be made up of general chemistry. And then 15% are going to be from organic chemistry. Finally, 25% of questions are going to be related to physics. In the next section, this one is psychological, social, and biological foundations of behavior. So a lot of people refer to this section as psychology and sociology, since those are the main components here. So this section is made up of mostly psychology, so 65% comes from introductory psychology, and 30% of it comes from introductory sociology. And again, biology shows up again here. So this is the third section that biology has shown up in, and here it's just 5%. So you can see psychology being kind of related to biology in some of these passages. Now, before we jump and go into the next section, I wanted to talk a little bit about how the WISE MCAT prep course is designed to ensure that you know all of these subjects and that you're super prepared for the MCAT. So we actually have an instructor for each of the different subjects you see listed, an expert MCAT instructor. So there's an instructor for biology, biochemistry, physics, general chemistry, organic chemistry, and psychology and sociology. So we have an instructor for each subject that has years of MCAT teaching experience. Our instructors range from having PhDs to being in an MD PhD program currently. So they'll definitely be able to provide you with a lot of great MCAT tips and share their experiences with you. So now let's talk about CARS. CARS is kind of a unique beast, I'll call it. A lot of students really struggle with this and it's just because we haven't really seen something like this very commonly in university. For a lot of students, this section is kind of almost brand new and it's quite difficult to study for, especially if you're doing Doing this for the first time. So let's first talk about the skills for CARS because they are different than the skills we were talking about earlier for the science sections. So the skills for CARS involve foundations of comprehension. So when you're reading through the passage, there's going to be some questions that are related to figuring out how well you can comprehend the information you just read. So 30% of the questions will be based on that. I know that sounds kind of easy because you have the passage right in front of you, but trust me, it is a lot more difficult than it sounds. And the MCAT is kind of known for choosing kind of wacky passages. They'll be very random, some more complex than others, and it is timed. So we have very limited time to go through each of the passages. The next skill is reasoning within the text, and that makes up 30%. So this might be something that's explicitly said in the passage, and then you have to reason based on that in certain questions. And then reasoning beyond the text, students mostly struggle with this part. Um, I know when I was writing the MCAT, I really struggled with this part, and this makes up 40% of CARS. So what is reasoning beyond the text? This means that they might be talking about 
you know, let's say just a random topic on humanities and social sciences, as we'll see that that's what CARS is made up of. And then the question might say, what is the author's opinion on this? And so if you don't have a very strong understanding of the passage, answering that question is going to be very difficult because it wasn't explicitly said in the passage. So you have to really be able to reason beyond the text in order to get these types of questions right. Another common question in the CARS section is based on what you've read in the passage, do you think the author would agree with this statement? And it's going to be some random statement. A lot of students struggle with that. How are we supposed to know what the author agrees with or not, right? We don't have the author sitting here. And so the idea is you're going to learn how to go through the passage, figure out what the author's opinion is, and then using process of elimination, get to the best possible answer. So there are a lot of different strategies and tips to learn when it comes to cars and I want you guys to know you are in good hands. So for our MCAT prep course, we actually went above and beyond and we wanted to find somebody that could offer a CARS experience like no other because I know that a lot of the textbooks and many different MCAT prep companies just don't explain CARS very well. And so we went with a very different approach where we actually hired a lawyer to teach CARS and you'll meet John very soon. So John has over 10 years of experience teaching LSAT, which is the test people take if they want to become lawyers. And he also has many years of experience teaching cars for the MCAT. And because he's a lawyer, he has a very different approach when it comes to cars that makes so much sense. He really has a very strong understanding of cars, all of the different question types. And he's going to provide you guys with lots of different practice questions and drills that are specifically aimed at improving your skills in these areas so that when it comes to any passage, you guys are going to be absolutely fine. So I'm really excited for you guys to meet John and get to experience his approach to cars, which is very, very step-by-step. -step. So a lot of us, when we try cars, we start at different points and John has designed his course so that no matter where you are at your, as your starting point in cars, you will improve. So he kind of starts off very simply and then depending on how much you struggled with that concept, you can then complete more and more practice questions and drills. So there's really so much for everyone. And I really wish I had something like that when I was writing my MCAT because I know that cars was such a struggle for me. So the cars passages, what do they actually talk about? So 50% of the passages will talk about some topic related to humanities. And I'll give you guys a few examples soon. And 50% of the passages will talk about um, some topic related to social sciences. So here are some examples for passage topics that are related to humanities and social sciences. Now this is not an extensive list, but just to give you an idea of what you could be reading about when you're writing your MCAT, right? So some of these topics seem really random and not related to medicine, like dance and music and all these different things, but you could see any of these topics on the MCAT. So what's nice about CARS is that you don't have to go and study each of these topics. That's not what CARS is about. So you don't need to study this content, but what you do need to do is you need to learn all the different skills. And once you learn that, it's just kind of repeating patterns that you can then answer any questions on any type of CARS passage that you get on your MCAT. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what makes CARS so unique because um, you probably have heard that a lot of students do find this section very, very challenging. So CARS was actually designed to specifically measure the analytical and reasoning skills that students will need to be successful in medical school. So how did they go about creating that? So CARS is all about taking a very complex passage and being able to pick apart the pieces of information you need to answer the questions when you don't even know what the passage is about. The other part that's unique that we mentioned is that all of the information that a student needs to answer the questions in a CARS passage is going to be found in the passage. So if you get a passage on music, that does not mean you need to have any existing knowledge on music in order to answer those questions. Instead, they're going to ask you questions about that passage. And you'll see what I mean very soon when you take a look at examples of CARS passages.